As you can see, technical workshop, drive the trains out on a perfectly ordinary spur where we can have one train in at a time. Um, and that's a daily, daily occurrence for us. We've got the trains in, both trains in the workshop, one at a time when we do our daily checks. Otherwise, this is where we do all, all of our winter maintenance as well. You're more than welcome to come in and have a look at the workshops if you like. As I say, there's a train, there's the workshops. We'll wait with going out to the other areas first. On, around the wheel and on the track for that sake, which is a couple of microns thick, very, very thin leg, but incredibly slippery. So if our technicians ever have to walk on the track, we never walk on, on the round part, simply because of this. But the smell, yeah. it's just fantastic. This is also from the the, the the wheel uh, producer. Okay. Um, and this is a, a standard product that we use fairly, fairly often on, on the coast. <laughs> so again, this is one of our daily procedures. train every day. We do the lap bar test, we check both cylinders on the lap bars, we do the the visual check of the train and then it's this and then we do our test runs in the morning. This ride has a fairly heavy mor morning check for us. <coughs> the mega light which you tried this morning, they do that in about an hour to do the morning checks. This one takes an hour and a half. We've got a bit more mechanics and a bit more techniques here which we have to take care of. But we'll have a look at that when we come out into the into the launch zone now and the boost zone. But we start at six o'clock. We start at six. We usually start four minutes of, with four guys at six o'clock. Then one comes at seven and one comes at eight, which brings us up either to six or seven guys, and then we run from six until ten with the park ready to open. I guarantee you that when I get to work at six o'clock. I look at my watch, and next time I look at my watch, it's 10 to 10 in the morning, and it feels like I've been here for 10 minutes. You run, you run, you run, you run, you run. But we're used to it. We're used to it. But there again, you can't have too many problems. You can't discover that there's 
four load wheels that need to be changed and a belt that needs to be changed because then you've got a problem. Then you've got to start prioritizing your work, which is more important, that I have one of the kiddie rides up running at 10 o'clock or I have one of the big rides up and running at 10 o'clock. Obviously, we know what the answer is. So the whole time we have to prioritize where, where, where we work. Enjoy. Since 2012, this was uh, we started production in 2012, and we opened the 4th of May 2013. I know that the technology has advanced, especially with the maglev. But at the time, to build a maglev, we would have to put the we would have to put the rider so high off the track that you would lose the speed because you're so high off the track. The second alternative was a hydraulic launch and boost. But as I'm sure you're well aware, look at, look at the, the big hydraulic coasters around the place. Their maintenance is ridiculous and the costs are even worse. That leaves you with kicker wheels. Kicker wheels, they're not the prettiest things in the world, but they're effective. And it's uh, cheaper to operate? I wouldn't say it's cheaper to operate. Obviously we run with a flywheel, so what we do is we spin we spin an AC motor up with, with uh, two of the, with, with 400 volts. Ordinary AC motor spun up with 400 volts, but that spins a DC shunt motor up as a flywheel. That works as a generator. We then deliver our, our power into, the, into some drives, which we have in the electrical room, and the drives then supply the wheels. If you, I don't know, have you ridden the, the ride today at all? Yes. 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 If you stand up on, on the terrace and watch, you'll notice that the boost starts up first. The boost starts spinning first. That's because it's building up power to deliver to the launch. Once the train has, has left, the launch continues to run. That's now busy building up power to deliver to the boost. And as soon as the train comes through the boost, both sets stop. So they supply one another. But we'll see that now when we come out and, and, and have a look at the Kabu section and the launch section. Three years with the wheels and I've lost two mils off of them. Which is impressive. Yeah. We, really? Replace okay, them so. All over and because then it's not cheap. Exactly. Then Never been replaced after three years. My my travel <laughs> wheels, station, etc. Those, those get worn, but these do not get worn. But then again, I'm not running into a stationary wheel. They are spun up and. As the train comes through that section up there, you can see the three se sensors I have on the track. Those are actually a speed detection, which then run to some of the motors. That motor, for example, has no code. It tells the motor what speed it's at in relation to the train and speeds the motors up to adapt to the train. Always the same. <laughs> every, every man on yeah. Chris is starting to get impatient with us, so why don't we get up into the station and we can take a take a ride and you're welcome to come and ask any questions you like. Okay. Okay. Can you accelerate the speed? In the mornings, when, when I do my morning check, the first six launches are what we call a fast launch. I've got an extra six meters a second. <laughs> Thank you. 
dann gehe ich noch mal weiter. Wirst dich ab. Yes. 